Hi guys, Kelly Harris from Lake Country. Behind me here is a 25 year old Peugeot, 30,000 miles. So it's not high value, it's not a very expensive car. It's probably quite rare really when you think about the age of this car and its low value, how many are left on the road. Massive sentimental value to the customer. Brought the car to us, I'll show you in a minute the things wrong with the car, that he would like to rewind its age really, make it a bit younger, fresher, cleaner looking. So me and Justina are gonna go around, check the car, and then we're going to take it outside, wash it, take all the dirt away, all the grime and muck and everywhere, clean the engine bay. Then we're gonna inspect it again, bring it indoors, and then start detailing it. Let's have a quick look around the car. So I've noticed already there's deep scratches and swells, but actually some quite bad sort of fallout contamination over the bonnet, including bird poo edging marks. I can see the screen's got some scratches in the glass, a lot of grime and dirt in all the corners of the windscreen. I mean, unfortunately, some areas of this car we can't fix because there are parts that need replacing. But let's see what we can achieve on detailing. This isn't just polishing now, this is intensive cleaning of the roof, all the shuts, all the rubbers, all the edges. We're going to clean everywhere we can. So, obviously, being old, and I've noticed something like in here, this is all floppy and falling apart. So, this light here is completely matte. There's literally no gloss to it whatsoever. There's some really, really bad deep scratches in there and there's some texture. So there might be some sanding in localized areas and a lot of polishing. Stay tuned. We are now going to get on with the process of cleaning and bringing back its youth. So now we're gonna clean the engine bay. I can see this has got obviously 25 years worth of grime. There's grime, grease, dirt, mud. I've got to be very, very careful with electrics. So we're going to do everything localized to start with, with cleaning. So I'm going to use a degreaser and I'm going to use an all-purpose cleaner. And then if there's any stubborn areas, we'll change the sort of degreaser strength because we do it four to one or 10 to one. And then we might use some tire and glue remover. So we're going to do each step slowly, step by step. Um, it's just going to take hours and hours of just cleaning really and just be very careful. So, cue B-roll of you watching me brushing away with lots of little brushes, using cloths and cleaners, and let's get this engine bay clean. We're now about to clean the roof. It's a fabric roof. So if I was gonna do a tip, is really make sure you look at the roof properly and sort of remember where bad areas are. Now, annoyingly, this roof actually isn't that bad. I'm talking about roofs when you get mold in certain places or on a crease line or as a, as a bird poop stain patch. Because the moment you get this roof wet, it looks clean. So anything that's a different shade or shadow, like there's a good example there, a bit of bird poo there. What happens is when it gets wet, like I just said, it all becomes the same. So ideally is to clean it, then put it in the sun, to dry it out, to clean it again. So the amount of times we end up having to clean a roof twice, we wash it once then clean it, hose it down, wait for it to dry to see another pipe patch somewhere still. So we need the sun to inspect the roof when it's dry, but we don't really want the sun on the roof while we're cleaning it because we want the chemicals to stay there longer. QB roll of us, scrub it away, clean this roof. You'll see this roof after when it's done.
So after closer inspection of this panel, we have the obvious swells. I mean, it's an old car, it's swirly. We've got a really quite a strong print pattern. Looking up close, it's some raised and etched in defects. Now, with polishing with pads, anything raised above the surface, the pad will follow over the top of the surface. So what we're gonna do is sand this panel down. Now, that does mean the orange pill will be reduced, almost removed, which is not a bad thing. We're gonna get a better finish. And fortunately, it's two top panels we got wrong on this car or an issue with this car. So I don't mind I can sand this panel and the other panel, the boot lid and the bonnet, to make them look much better. But that's the only way we're really efficiently gonna remove these defects is to sand them. So we're gonna use a sanding machine to sand down the surface. What the tip is here, we're trying to look through the sanding marks and just remove the defects. We're not trying to remove more clear coat than needed. So we're gonna use the UDOS 51E in the sanding mode, which is eight mil mode, with a dry sanding system, not a wet, we're gonna do dry. I will speak about why dry in a moment once we actually start doing some sanding. So there's a, there's a pros and cons to dry and wet sanding. So a little bit of tip, so stay tuned why we're gonna dry sand. So another thing obviously with an electric sander is using water and electric doesn't mix very well. It's quite dangerous. So I would always say really with an electric machine, you dry sand. There is a potential you could damp sand, completely different video, little tip. All it is, you're putting a tiny mist of water onto the surface or pad. You're not flooding it with water, but I don't see it as a pro there. It's just, it's a con. So dry sanding, a little bit more dust, very easy to see your progress, very quick and easy to wipe off, but you must clean the pad as you go regularly. That's the sanding completed. We used 1500 grit and 2500 grit. So we now have a nice uniform pattern. We can use the different light sources in this building to see if there's any defects left. I can see that we're pretty much ready to polish back. So I have the purple foam wall pad on the UDOS 51E in rotary mode. Now I need to apply some heavy cut compound, not too much. Obviously it's only gonna fling off the pad being it's a rotary. Three blobs will be enough, three or four blobs. And let's just do a test patch. So that's the rotary polishing stay completed. All we'll I have now is holograms, buffer lines, sort of record player disc marks, which are like a kaleidoscope of sort of polishing troughs. Let's call them polishing troughs. That's all that's left now. I can see in the light now, all I have is rotary buffer lines. Majority of the defects are gone, probably 90% of the defects. So how we remove those buffer lines? I'm gonna use UDOS 51E. I'm gonna put it into a dual action mode and I'm gonna use the light cutting pad. This is gonna be the perfect solution for you as a one step pad. So if you didn't have these buffer lines and you hadn't sanded this panel, like we're doing the rest of the car, this is actually the perfect cutting pad with a medium cut pad to do your cutting and finishing one. That's where we call it an enhancement detail, enhancement cut, or maybe a production detail or tray detail, whatever you wanna call it. It's a quick detail that makes it glossy and removes defects. Polishing stage is now finished, the light cutting stage, stroke polishing stage, the one step stage. I've already checked my progress as I was going and clearly it is looking stunning, stunning. So a recap before I show you the results, we used one machine, the UDOS 51E, we used two sandpaper grades, 1500 and 2500 grade, dry sanding. We used rotary mode with the purple foam wall pad and then we went to P2 15 mil dual action mode or random orbital mode with our one step HDO one step microfiber pad with key here is the orange backing. Let's check the results.
So all that's left to do now is repeat the identical process on the boot lid, the rear panel, and then that's the top surfaces done. So let's get to it. So what we've got here on the vehicle is a average to poor repaired panel. At first glance, the actual clear coat and the color, the color's gone on uniform and the clear coat's got a, a reasonable texture, factory texture. So, and I can't see lots of runs and sags and silicons and other defects. So when I say poor, really it's the prep. What we have is lots of prep work from probably shallow dents, almost certainly. So there'll be some filler and primer in our Bondo if you're in the USA. We've got different terms for filler. So there's been some repair work and then they've used way too aggressive paper, put the filler in and then rubbed that filler down. Now, when this was first repaired and then painted, you wouldn't have seen these marks which you are now seeing on camera. Those marks would have appeared over time when everything settles and drops. The only way we can fix this is to sand it. Now, this is a very difficult thing to try and describe. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sand a little bit currently and show you the witness marks. Then I'll describe in more detail. So I'm gonna use the UDOS 51E in sanding mode with 1500 grit sandpaper, dry sanding, so we can easily wipe this down and show you how to fix it. So as you can see, the reason why I'm using the dry sanding system is before I wipe this, you can really see the obvious score lines in the clear coat. But those score lines aren't actually in the clear coat, they are in the filler primer coat and it's just everything is settled and followed into that pattern. So what we got is a drop down and up in the steel. So what happens is if you just pulled a color and paint on, it would follow that. So someone's put some filler in there. So it scored this up really viciously, really, really abraded it. Then smoothed in some filler, some Bondo in there across the top. Then I would have rubbed that down really, really aggressive, really sharp. So that has score lines. Then they would have put a primer layer over the whole lot and then rubbed that down. And then your color, which is the color there. So then you've got color, then clear coat. So you've got color, and clear. And what happens over time is this area here, which is a lot thicker than the rest, shrinks and settles. So it mimics the shape of bad sanding marks, really dirty score sanding marks. But also, if they then rub down the filler, let's call this filler, we call it filler in Europe, it's Bondo in America, if they will score that really badly, what happens is it shrinks into the scores in underneath where it was keyed up, and also that means this then starts to appear scores on the surface, which the primer coat, this being primer, will then sink into, and what happens is it brings all the surface down. So whatever was in this repair ends up as zigzag lines in this top surface. When that's gone, we know we fixed it. And also, of course, the orange peel is gonna go at the same time. We have a little defect there. There is actually a bit of dirt in the paint there as well. So all I'm gonna do is carry along this panel here. There's not much left to do in 1500, then switch to 2500, then polish it back. Very simple process with the UDOS 51E. So I've done enough 1500 grit on this right hand side, which can clearly be seen that this is now matte and uniformly matte and doesn't have the highs and lows little leopard print spots, which is the troughs, peaks and troughs of the orange peel. So the orange peel has been removed and the defects have been removed. I've just noticed that the shell angle is a slight bit more there. I'll do it once more past there. But first of all, I'm gonna go along the rest of this panel. Then I'm gonna to switch to two and a half thousand grit. So this is now 2,500 grit stage. So what you're gonna see is a slight improvement in gloss. It's just a slightly more refined sanding, so it makes the polishing easier. So I'm 
finished sanding now. That was two and a half hours on grip. I can actually see down at a shallow angle. The reflection's beautiful now. I can see there's no defects left. It's done its job. So now it's just back to polishing. So all I need to do is remove the sanding sandpaper and the backing plate. I'm going to use a HDO microfiber cutting pad. I'm going to switch to, let's do P2 which is 15 mil orbit. Put some heavy cut compound. I'm gonna do one pass and I'm gonna show you the results. <laughs> Using the LC, Power Tools handheld light. I can now inspect the paint. Now, one pass has fixed it. There's a little tip I can give you here. We could have changed pad and compound. If that wasn't enough cut, I could have switched up to P3 mode. It's a more aggressive cut. It's a 21 mil orbit. But I'm gonna show you on camera now. I can't see any sanding marks or any defects left. So, great job. So this panel's completed. In actual fact, all of the car's panels are now completed. They've all been either sanded and polished or just polished. The whole car, Udos 51E, it, with multiple Lake Country manufacturing pads. We've had various pads around the car, but you've just seen on this video here, where we've just used a microfiber pad for cutting. And I use then the finishing pad, which is not on camera, the black finishing foam to refine this panel down. But the results are amazing, incredible. When you think that looked like it, it couldn't be saved. And hopefully it's been helpful that you can save defects like this when actually they're under the color. Mind blowing maybe, probably didn't thought you could fix them, but you can. So a little bonus feature, I thought I'd give you a bit of a tip here of cleaning glass. We have just cleaned this glass inside and out and currently dry, it looks lovely and clean. You would believe it's clean. I'm going to use a machine polisher and one of our pads to clean the glass with a mechanical abrasion. It's not gonna remove the scratches, the scratches still be there, that's a different process which we have on a Porsche video where we remove scratches in a side glass. This I'm actually going to just use to clean. Now, how can you tell this window's still dirty if it looks completely clear, an optical clear at the moment? Window cleaner or alcohol, I'm using alcohol, but a, wind, a liquid window cleaner would do. As you wipe it over the surface, if you notice, as it starts to dry, there's a mottled effect, sort of a, a marbling effect. And I can actually see the wiper mark where the wiper's been rubbing. So as that, you're driving down the road and the windscreen, windscreen's wet, damp, and your wiper wipes, you get that effect. You get a really bad visual visibility. It's harder to see out of. I'll do it once more. So there's this horrible mottling effect. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick up the Udos 51E and I'm gonna use a half-worn HGO microfiber pad. So there's a little tip there. Don't throw your microfiber pads away when they're starting to get worn and a bit straggly on the ends and edges. I'm going to use a heavy cut compound and I'm just going to correct. When I say correct, I'm not fixing scratches. Again, I'll say this. I'm just going to mechanically abrade away the contaminants on there. And it doesn't matter if you use 100% alcohol or panel wipes or any glass cleaner. It's not going to remove its contaminants. It needs machine polishing, but for cleaning, not polishing. Now, okay, I'm, going to, I'm going to grab the Udos 51E and polish that area. So heavy cut compound any of your preferred heavy cut compound. It can even be a heavy cut compound that you, it's not your favorite anymore and you might have found a better brand compound out there. Don't throw that compound away. This is the perfect time to be able to clean all your customers' cars, the windscreen, the side glass. So let me do a little square patch for you. Nothing obvious on the pad, but let me show when we use the alcohol to wipe the surface again, the difference. Let's wipe off most of the compound. 
I won't all be gone. I'm now gonna wet the surface. This is just to clean the residue compound away. Then I'm gonna flip the cloth, flood the cloth, and just repeat the process of what you saw earlier. I'm only flipping the cloth so we've got a clean surface, so there's, there can't be any cross-contamination. Now I'm gonna flood the cloth, and now what you'll see is the boundary of where it's clean and where it's not. So you can see the line there, where it's got that mottled effect, and it's down that area. So I've polished a sort of square rectangle there, but remember, it's just to remove the contaminants. It's not to remove scratches. The process won't, but what it's done, it's cleaned the surface. So if I wipe it again, you can now see quite clearly a much clearer area of the screen when it's wet and as it dries out. That is now mechanically abraded away all of the contaminants. So as a recap, we use machine polisher, heavy cut compound, heavy cut pad. It can be a foam pad, wall pad, and microfiber. Doesn't really matter. There's not special polishing techniques involved here. It's just a mechanical abrasion to remove the dirt contamination. So it's a great tip. Worn out pad, old compound, just keep it in your cupboard. You never know when you can use it to clean glass. We do this on all customers' cars, all the side glass, all the rear glass. One thing, when you wash a customer's car, make sure you haven't got the side glass beading. Some of the GT model Porsches and other brands of cars have a hydrophobic coating on the side glass. They never have it on the front or the back. Be careful, if you have that, that process will remove that coating. That's the only time, but you'll wash the car before you do any correction, you'll notice if it's beading. But great results, great visibility, improvement in visibility, great safety feature, and actually the customer will really notice the difference. The wipers will just be better in performance and it'll be a much clearer screen. So that's the transformation completed. The team have done a great job. It looks stunning, it really does. It was one of those cars where I was like, is it worth doing? Is it gonna turn the car around into what it looks like now, or as good as it's gonna be? It has. Now, it wasn't easy to detail. Yes, you probably follow that we do do a lot of nice new, brand new cars, one-year-old cars. A car this age is low value. Normally, someone wouldn't spend this money on this particular car at this age. Sentimental, loves the car. It actually isn't our highest budget detail we've ever done. And it's come out great, as you can see. We've done a lot of work to it. In intensive engine cleaning, intensive interior cleaning, lots of hard work, lots of grime to remove. Then of course, the paint work. We have polished the paint with various pads, microfiber, wall, and finishing pads, and use the UDOS 51E. Not only did we use the UDOS 51E for polishing, we will use the UDOS for sanding. That's my favorite moment here, is where down the side of the car it had some really bad paint repairs, and you can see like the marks in the filler that's actually then on top of the surface, it's all sunk into it. So by sanding and polishing methods, we've managed to remove any evidence of bad paint repairs. So that to me is the best turnaround. One thing, would you like your car detailed to this level at Lake Country UK Limited? Or would you even like to learn how to detail a car to this level? Links down below, how to contact us and get in touch. As always, like, subscribe and smash that bell. I'm Kelly Harris from Lake Country, UK. Goodbye. <laughs>